do this new stuff, man? I, I, the fans are watching. I'm, I'm always, you know what? I'm always ready for my fans. I'm always ready for <laughs> some new stuff. Uh, I'm always ready for some new Valiant titles, some new Valiant hotness. I hear you. <clears throat> well, I got somebody who is up and coming that I want to talk about. And for you guys watching, what's going on, people? I am Patrick Michael Strange. This is Troy David Phillips. And y'all know we do our new release Wednesday video stuff, but we got something new for y'all. I want to do something different since, as he says, I'm the industry guy and I know pretty much every wish, you know, I, I don't like to brag and say I do, but you know, I, I got a lot of friends, got a lot of friends. And um, going along with that, um, there's a guy who, he, who lives here in the Woodbridge area who's an amazing talent. He's both a writer, an artist, and he is just doing his thing. He's a great guy. I interviewed him for my show, Two Guys in a Comic Book. And uh, I want to bring him to y'all now with this debut episode of The Strange World. Strange What's up with world. that? Because, you know, Troy got his Troy spotlight <laughs> on the store. And, you know, Craig got Craig's Corner. And we got Toy Time. Uh, but now it's time for me to rap. You know what I'm saying? Show my swag. You, you, you think people so, are ready for this? I think they're ready, bro. You think they're ready for that? I think they're ready. It's 2014. Y'all ready, right? right. You're, you're ready, right? I'm ready. You're ready? All right. So here we go. I want to introduce to y'all an amazing talent. He does a book called Capes and Babes. He uh, is a great web comics artist, and he puts together those into volumes that you can pick up. So, f so for old guys that like this guy right here who <laughs> wants the, the hard copy stuff, you can pick that up, Troy. Yeah, he's yeah. he's got the the great volumes in full effect for you. Um, but you can catch his daily uh, or it's not daily, it's weekly, right? It's weekly. Three um, times. He, he's got it for you. His name is Chris Flick. Represent Woodbridge, Virginia. Shout out to my man Chris Flick. Let's give him a round yes. of applause. Yes. Well, First of all, for that great introduction, I have to give you this dollar. That was fantastic. Hey, man. Thank you. This is my boy here. Great guy. Thank you for uh, coming on to the Two Guys in a Comic Book show way back when. Shout out to Baltimore for getting that show on. Um, but yeah, now we got the strange world, and I, I wanted to bring a local talent, man. And this guy is doing it big. His wife makes some great goodies. Shout out to Judy. Um, thank you so much. You sure, I'm sure appreciate point. that. Hey. He gets all the pies. They bring him pies. <laughs> we got people here bringing him pies, you know, so I got to get some cookies. Yeah, well, can a brother get some cookies? <laughs> hey, hey, a brother can get some cookies. Hey, <laughs> Asian brothers get some love too, man. Anyway. Well, she makes a killer pumpkin pie too. So. Oh, so I'm, I'm all about the pecan. That, that is, that is the I don't know pie. if she does the pecan. I'll have to ask her, but she, she does if people love her pumpkin pie. <laughs> We'll have, we'll, have to give that, we'll have to give that a shot. Definitely. We'll have to give that I'm a gonna shot. We're going to take you on that. <laughs> All right, Chris. So for the uninitiated, why don't you tell them a little bit about Capes and Babes and uh, what it's all about. And I'll uh, all right. your material real quick yeah. and let this yeah, man yeah, get a look yeah. of it. I'll, uh, all right, so, so I should do it like this. These are, uh, I have volume one I, um, is uh, low in print. So uh, I only have volume two and volume three. Um, and they're basically, uh, the titles are plays on my last name, Flick. Uh, you can't print flick is the title of the first one. Um, you still can't print flick, and that's why you can't print flick. So these are, uh, yeah, they're all volumes, um, all volumes of the collected comic strips. So you can check those out for the old guy, because he doesn't check the the web stuff. So is it what is the frequency on your web content? Uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, unless uh, I get really heavy on my uh, convention schedule, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and then. Uh, yeah, three times a week. Um, I have a full-time job. I'm a full-time web and des uh, graphic designer, so I do this at night and on the weekends. And uh, Capes and Babes is basically about a strip mall, a comic book shop. There you go. One Flashback crazy comments. werewolf. There you go. I wanted to put a really crazy character in there. Didn't want to have a talking dog, uh, talking animal, so I figured a were werewolf would be uh, a cool weird thing to put in there so <laughs> so what was the genesis of this idea did you used to work at a comic book shop or it was just no i didn't work on one but, but i hung out this? i hung out you know during my high school years work, uh hung out at the local comic book shop loved it uh it started out as a uh, as a one of my one of those autobiographical things that i worked in college and it was going to be really serious and i kept putting it off putting it off putting it off and then the web comics thing sort of hit and i said Hey, you know, let's make it a humorous thing. Okay. And uh, so I just made it a made all the same characters in there except for the werewolf. The werewolf was something that I came up with um, when I was deciding to make it into a humorous strip. I needed a humorous character, okay. uh, kind of a smart alecky guy. So I threw him in there. Once I had the werewolf character, I just took off from 
all crazy shenanigans that I could think of and things like that. So it's a little bit based on my real life experiences going to a convention. The werewolf is a uh, artist, goes to conventions. Uh, it's kind of a Charlie Brown character. Nothing ever goes his way, and he, okay. he always gets pissed off about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you were artists uh, in high school? In high school, uh, I was an artist since I was in, way, <laughs> you know, four or five years old. Uh, my grandmother gave me uh, uh, her tracing of her uh, typing paper, and uh, okay. put, put one of her way back when. Now I'm showing my age here, but <laughs> Hardy's, Hardy's and Arby's used to have these glasses that had the Warner Brothers character on it. Okay. Set the character, uh, her, her prize Arby collection glasses in front and said, uh, draw, draw Bugs Bunny, draw whatever. And that's how it really started. And then, you know, high school, I just kept progressing. And then uh, okay. graphic design. Were you like me when they had those book fairs? They had those how to draw books. Yeah. And you, used to, I used to gobble those. Yeah, those up. are great. The when they had just robots. And then, oh, there's a dinosaur one. I gotta get the dinosaur yeah. one. Yeah, how to draw do dogs, cats, exactly. all sorts of, yeah. So yeah, and then the graphic design I got into when I was in high school. Okay. I was in a drama, and once people knew that I could draw, I got into, oh, well, Chris will do the poster. Oh. And then that led into more of my interest in graphic design. Graphic okay. design went into art school. Okay, and then where'd I, you go to school at? But, um, Maryland College of Art and Design for a year. It was in Silver Spring, Maryland. I don't know if it, ex it exists right anymore. Okay. Then uh, transferred to Radford University for four years. Okay, cool. So, and then, but I've been uh, drawing all, even though I was still working on graphic design, I was always, uh, I had a cartoon strip in college, that okay. sort of stuff. I, so you um, contributed like the daily newspaper or school well, paper? Well, it was, it was, it was bi-monthly. Bi it was okay. the alternative off-campus newspaper. Ah. And that, that was great because I, I even, even then, even once a month, you're going to, you're going to, and I think that was one of the reasons why it took me a long time to start this guy up because in high in, in college, mm -hmm. you're taking classes yeah. and you're full full load of graphic design classes and, yeah. and trying to come up with a comic strip, it, yeah. and once a month it, it seems like it's be really easy, but the jokes just didn't come all the time, and so yeah. it's like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm then, sure that was a learning experience. Yeah, yeah, it was a great kind of get you into a schedule base. Yeah. Uh, of putting together this content yeah. for that Yeah, magazine. and, and uh, you know, I got paid for it, so, you know, awesome. I had to crank something out. Yeah. So there were there were a couple of nights or a couple of weekends when kids were out partying, and I'm like, you know, I got to do this comic strip because yeah. it's got to go in the paper on Tuesdays. <laughs> gotcha. So yeah. was it, so so you were doing that in college, and then when was it when you like, okay, I want to start doing my strip? That was after college? Oh, no, no, the co uh, Capes and Babes was actually, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a late bloomer in terms of uh, web comics. I mean, I, I started... Started going to conventions, been been a fan. The only convention around here was Baltimore Comic Con yeah. for the longest time. So I'd go there and, and did you go to it when it was at the hotel or at the convention? Yeah, I was center? started. I, start, I was I, I was at. I, I'm proud to say that I, I went to every every Baltimore Comic Con. Then once I wonder they first if you started. and I met because I was there when it was the in its third year, second or third year is, and that's where I got my start with Martin Nathan, who's the great guy that puts together the Baltimore Con of comic cards and collectibles. Shout out to Martin Nathan. Yeah, I um, was. I even went to the one where now I, was, I used to sit next to Perez, man. Perez, yeah. That, well, I was. I used to it was like that to, one little alley in that hotel. I used to go to the small press expo too. Yeah. Okay. And I went to the one where uh, on 9/11 they they couldn't have the the SPX, and so they uh -huh. combined it with the Baltimore yep. Comic Con in the hotel. So that there. really showing my age. Oh yeah. Did. And really, web comics hadn't really hit. That's the, when I was in my publishing days. Really? Bro. <laughs> so I was like, I'm curious if we ran it because you looked familiar, but. You know, being a, I do all this stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was a, a regular fan of SPX okay. and, and loved all that stuff. Uh, web comics really hadn't hit that big, or I didn't really know about it until about, I'd say about 2006, 2007, I started going to shows, specifically Baltimore, I started mm -hmm. seeing more of these web comic artists, and they started having tables, and, okay. and started actually going to those tables more than I actually started picking up comics. Mm -hmm. and. And then uh, finally, I just uh, started talking to people. Uh, two people that really helped me along were uh, Danielle Corsetta and okay. Brad Geiger from Evil Inc. Okay. And uh, you know that was when they were first starting out, and, yeah. and um, they both uh, you know took a look at my stuff. Okay. Um, I didn't have any comic strips or anything. They yeah. just looked at basically my portfolio and said, "Hey, you know, you can do this." And okay. And so I just went home that night. One of those, uh, I think it was uh, two thousand and. Uh, 2007, yeah, it was a Baltimore Comic Con, and and I just finally said, you know, I got to start doing this, 
and I, I pulled out my old Capes and Babes graphic novel thing and I said, screw it, I'm turning into a cartoon, and uh -huh. I created 12 right there that weekend, and then I just started taking off from there. So over the course of a weekend, like, boom. Yeah, I think it was one, one of those things. concept, that, yeah. and it was like, okay, let me come It was a creative. slow hunger, because what would happen is I'd Sorry. start going to uh, Baltimore Comic Con, and... and being a graphic artist myself, mm -hmm. and I started looking at everybody, and I, you know, there's really great stuff there, and, and, and every artist alley has has tiers of different levels of artists, and and I'd look at other people and go, yeah, I'm just as good as they are. Why am I not doing this? Yeah. And so somewhere along the way, it started. Uh, I started flipping from being a fan to wanting to actually do it. All right. And I just said, you know, I got to get off the, I got to get off the bench, and I got to get in the game. Gotcha. And that's when, that's when I really got serious and started talking to people about how do, how do you? I didn't know anything about <clears throat> getting a table, mm -hmm. how, how to go about going to shows, what's involved in that. Until so I start, just started asking questions to, mm -hmm. at the artists, you know, mm -hmm. when I, picked artists when they weren't really busy and uh, you know hey could you talk to me how do you do this mm -hmm. and you know a lot of them were really really helpful and said this is how you do it this is how I did it and so don't be afraid to ask those guys yeah you know? yeah I'm, don't yeah, everybody's <clears throat> willing to impart information yeah that's how you learn anything is you yeah you gotta yeah. start the, you know now sometimes people don't know where to begin asking you know yeah. they have the questions and they might have the drive and the ambition but you know who do you talk to first you know who, who do you take your first question to what what is your first question really? Let's let's start there. I mean, yeah, and, you, and, uh, you, you talk about is, asking. You know, what's the first right, thing as, you ask? As long as as long as you can find a spot uh, during the day where an artist isn't busy, if uh, yeah. uh, is, is when they're not selling or when they're don't look like they're too tired. Yeah, uh, you respect know, the creators because yeah, they travel to get to the show. You know, they go through a lot. But there's our, always a convention. There's always a lull yeah. where. Where we're really slammed as an artist, we're trying to get, get original art out, but then then it ends, and then there's a little bit of a dull period where we're not selling or selling a whole lot of stuff. That's when you, I'm I'm very, I'm, you see my stuff. I'm very approachable as long as I don't have a lot of stuff that I need to crank out. I'm more than willing to, to sort of uh, pay it back or pay it forward, so to speak. If people help me. I want to help them. In fact. Uh, <clears throat> Another website I'm really heavily involved in is the Webcomic Alliance. I don't know if you know about that. I've heard of it, the URL. What's the URL? Uh, webcomicalliance.com. Web, www.webcomics, C O M. Yeah, webcomicalliance.com. Okay. Not plural. Okay. Yeah. Uh, web webcomicalliance.com. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, uh, five of us. Uh, we, we fluctuate. We had seven at one time, and we're at five. There's uh, um, all of us are graphic, uh, all of us are web. Car uh, web Cartoonists in one form or another. Some some write more than, than they draw, mm -hmm. but we have a podcast and we have a website where we write articles every month about a lot of it. A lot of it is like how we go about doing convention stuff and Definitely. questions we get from people at shows. We just turn it into we the podcast. We uh, we have two podcasts. One is devoted to a workshop podcast where we have we basically sit around here and say, hey, this is my problem. How can I, you know, how can I solve it? Definitely. And it's a round, round discussion table. And then the other one is it's a chat podcast where we just kind of BS and have fun. <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah, it's a, it's a really popular podcast. We get a lot of people who find us um, at conventions, take okay. our post, uh, take our uh, business card. Are you on iTunes? Uh, yeah, I think okay. so. I think so, so check, you got, check yep. them out on iTunes, Web Comic Alliance. Web Comic Alliance, and like I said. Uh, each of us writes a, writes an article a month, and uh, you'll find a ton of stuff. And it's all sorts of stuff from conventions, the business, uh, w uh, online advertising, anything we can think of, we try to write an article about. Definitely. So, Excellent. And what I like so much about Chris is, because uh, I get this from a lot of guys, Patrick, how'd you get into writing and publishing comics? Now you're doing filmmaking stuff. It's just all about doing it, people. And yep. he's a testament of just doing it, making it happen. Um, anybody can do it and now with the invention of the internet yeah. and, and forums such as yourself podcasts like yours you can go online and research this material and just you know study up people do the homework you know and make it happen believe in yourself you can do it um, I know this guy is always asking me a ton of creative questions so I'm gonna let you well, yeah. throw a couple <coughs> questions for Chris as well uh, well you have the uh, advantage of being artistically talented and coming up with the material uh, so what would you say for somebody who's got one or the other you know, there's there's always somebody who might have an idea for a story they've written, but they can't draw. And then there's an artist who's a great artist, but he's looking for someone else's idea to make real. He doesn't have an idea of his own. 
Well, I think there's a couple. There's two different parts of that. There's a, uh, if you if you're interested in doing it for fun, find another friend. Um, like especially if you're in high school or college. <clears throat> like my college trip, it was was basically to me and another friend of mine, and we just put it together ourselves. Um, and we alternated. We were both we were both artists, so we alternated between the writing and and, and uh, drawing. But if you're in a college or something like that, you can find somebody in, in a, a buddy who might who might be a, a more of a writer. And like from my perspective, I would look for a writer. Uh, it, just for a hobby, if you're really interested in doing it money-wise, trying to make some money off of it, that gets complicated because you want to have a contract and, and people go, oh, contract, we're best friends. But if you're really serious about making money, uh, you know, you put it, it doesn't have to be really fancy. You could just say uh, a contract can be, be basic the, down the middle of uh, my responsibilities are X, Y, Z, your responsibilities are X, Y, Z, and this is what happens when we, you know, come in. Because somewhere down the road, especially when you go to convention, now, now for me, uh, it, it kind of sucks because I'm a one-man show. Um, Don Griffin, who's also in the Webcomic Alliance. Yes. She's shout a, out to Don Griffin. Yeah, she's Amazing a, she's a one-woman show. Yeah. And we go to a lot of shows together, so... The suck, sucky thing is we have to pay for the tables ourselves, we have to travel by ourselves, we have to do a lot of things by ourselves. But if you have a team, a writing partnership, an uh, artist partnership, you can split costs. You yeah. can split a cable, um, you can split hotel costs and stuff like that. So that's where the contract stuff kind of comes into play and it's really important because you don't want to... A lot of times, uh, I'm speaking more, this is more of a graphic artist type standpoint than a, than a webcomic, but... Uh, if you ever have disagreements with somebody, you can always go back to your contract and say, "Hey, <laughs> this is what we said Truth. way back when, six months ago, and we're not we're not meeting those things." So, so that only happens when money gets you know when money gets involved. Well, sure, but but there's there's th there's lots of uh, websites out there. Like I think um, <clears throat> I don't know if they're still out there, but Pencilljack.com oh, yeah. was was a place where. You could uh, go to their forums and and put a um, online thing. Say I'm looking for a writer or I'm looking for an artist, and you can find people yeah. like that. There's the lead heavy forum boards. I remember back when. Yeah. Digital webbing was a yeah, great resource webbing. for finding uh, creators and. Facebook know, is a great people. place now. Face there's yeah, lots, there's now. lots of great. MySpace back in the yeah, day. Yeah. There's a you know? there's a lot of great great Facebook groups that are there's. There's a bunch of web comic groups that are out there that you can go there. Deviant and Art. Yeah. Is a, is Deviant a good Art one. is a great one. Uh, there's lots of social media places that you can go out and say, "Hey, I'm I'm doing this, and I'm I'm looking for this, and if you're interested, contact me, and we can work out details." Definitely. Okay. Well, that's <clears throat> that's a, that's a lot of good information, actually. So yeah. For for fans who want to get started, exactly, and th they may be serious about wanting to get started, but again, you know, if you don't know where square one is, yeah. right? Sometimes it's hard to, you know, get that mark. You get discouraged because you don't know where to begin. You know, you've got an idea, you know, how do you realize your idea? Sure, you need to learn how to write, you know, creative writing. You need to learn how to draw, you know, art yeah, well, school. Well, one of the two, <clears throat> you know, again, talking artist-writer, um, the the easiest thing to get started is just get a blog. I mean, that, that can work both as an artist and a writer. As a oh, writer, yeah. you can you can take a, you can get a blog, you can get a WordPress blog, and you can write your, your scripts out and, and post it and say, this is my script. And as artists, it makes sense to get a portfolio right away and yeah, push sure. your stuff out and say, "Hey, this is my art." That way, if somebody's interested, if somebody is a writer and they're looking for your, you can go to, "Hey," or you can get a DBNR page, or you can get a, a Pinterest. You can put your stuff on a Pinterest board and say, "This is my stuff," and people can take a look at it and say, "Oh, wow, I like that." So, no, just I'm a little curious, you know, just from your standpoint, from your perspective. If there were a reason why someone failed, and obviously not everyone succeeds in everything, yeah, um, you know, and the reality, you know, I think people should be realistic and just keep it in the back of your mind that your success story will not be like someone else's success story. Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. But aside from not getting started, what would you say the biggest stumbling block, the biggest failure point would be? Oh, uh, boy, that's that. No, that's a good one. That's a deep question, Troy. <laughs> well, I would have said that the first thing is that yep. you know, you once you first get started, I think the you have to have a realistic type yes. of. When I started, I didn't have any any um, 
uh, thoughts of grandeur or anything like, oh, wow, I'm going to be making a million dollars. That's why I'm still doing my jo full-time job. Right, right. Because yeah. uh, yeah. i got to pay the bills. I'm a, uh, I'm a primary breadwinner. i got to, you know, pay for the mortgage and all that other stuff. Yes, sir. Capes and Babes, uh, it's been going on for eight years now, and I'm only now beginning to start making some serious money. But the strip isn't really making me money as much as my convention appearances are making me money. Oh, sure. Really? So, okay. you know, that's that's where, uh, you know, the, the, I think it's, for me, it's a circular type of thing. Um, I may, I'm, I'm beginning to make some, some pretty good some pretty good cash at doing conventions, but I've been doing conventions since 2008. Mm -hmm. um, my commissions are beginning to be more popular. People, I'm beginning to find a name for myself, but I don't know if, if, if it's my name or if people recognize the comic book. Sometimes I think that people find my booth because of my comic strip and then want to get commissions, you know, other stuff. So, so for me, it's not primarily a concern of, oh, I got to push the comic strip. Comic strip got to make the money. Mm -hmm. I make the money any way I can. Right, right. And yeah. if, if it means commission stuff, that's fine. And, and the comic book is just a big, huge publicity for my commission work. Um, but yeah, I think that's what the people get into. People, a lot of, back when I started, and I started late, again, you know, mm -hmm. Penny Arcade and PVP yeah. and, and all those big names, they were already online for a couple of years. Yeah. And even, even Danielle, uh, Girls with Slingshots, was online for, for a while. And I think people go, oh, webcomics, easy money, I'm going to get into it. And mm -hmm. a lot of people got it trapped in that. So, oh, yeah. they make money on it, I'm going to make money on it. Yeah. And they find out that it's not, not it's not quite, you know, you just put a strip on the web and people will magically come and they'll magically <laughs> give you money. And if you build you magically it, quit your, yeah. yeah, you magically quit your <laughs> do job. Do you do and, ads on your site? Yeah. Because yeah. I know some artists, yeah. you know, that's how that's another way to yeah. earn money for yeah. those webcomic artists. Run those ads on there. Yeah, you, you know, run ads, point but, and clean. but ads are all based on, on traffic. Exactly. And, and a lot of it is, is just like anything else. The more you advertise, the more traffic you'll get. The more traffic you get, the bigger the bigger price you can put on your ads. Exactly. So one of the things I want to ask you about, because I'm sure, like you said, you're getting a lot of work from your commission-based mm -hmm. stuff. Something I've noticed as a friend of yours and as a fan of yours, you've been doing a lot of the Minion stuff lately. Oh. So uh, how has that been? And is and also on a, beyond just doing Minions and how, and why did you and why why did well, you decide I to do Minions? Doing that? It was, it is it was also, a complete accident. <laughs> um, are, are you interested in doing work for other companies? Maybe doing variant covers because a, a big thing now that I'm seeing uh, and that we do from our new release Wednesdays yeah. the the multiple covers of the variant covers that happen um, with a lot of the popular titles and especially artists like. Agnes Garbosca, um, who's the, 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 the Young Justice, the, the Itty Bitty Hellboy guy? Uh, uh, Baltazar. Uh, Art Baltazar. Franco, and, and the cute factor stuff is really yeah, happening. Yeah. And I, when I see that stuff, I think of you because you're my boy, man. I'm like, why isn't Chris Flick you know, doing some of those? And have you thought about doing that? Do you have an agent possibly to get you kind of that, that, that cover work? Um, so, but first, that's a lot of questions in one. Let's start with the minions. <laughs> oh, the minions. Were you a fan? Okay. Did, did, okay. Did, were you like me and um, your daughter was all about no, Despicable no, Me? No, uh, no. Uh, this actually happened. Another shout out to a guy who buys a lot of my commissions, James Rowe. Okay. He's a friend of mine on Facebook. Gotcha. He's, he's, he's comes to a lot of my local shows, and he had a, a book of minions that he had. You know, he <laughs> basically asked various artists to say, "Hey, do you?" Um, do me a minion as so and so, mm -hmm. and a lot of mashups they call. So yeah. I did it. I did the very first one was a Captain America minion, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, I I took a photograph of it, um, put it on my Facebook, and all of a sudden people started. You know, oh wow, that's a really great. Can you do one? Can you do a so and so minion? And, yeah. and then uh, and I just kept going to commission uh, conventions, and people would see. I had my portfolio book out. And I'd see a Captain America minion, then they'd see a Spider Man, and then oh, can you do a so and so, a Hulk minion? And all of a sudden, I started getting all these requests. And, and what happens normally when I do <clears throat> when I do a minion mashup? I post it on my Facebook yeah. page, and again, a lot of it has because my Facebook page is becoming a little bit popular. Yep. Um, I started getting, oh wow, that's really great, and then I started, I started getting an idea to start running minion mashup commission sales. Yes, sir. And so you know, every now and then, right before I go down a big, huge convention trail, I say, okay, well, I'm going to do. 
my <clears throat> my and and my commissions when I first started out were only twenty bucks, nine by six, full color. And this is how you make your money. Over the years, the more I went there, the more I, I, I gradually increased. I got more confident in my skills, got faster, got more, just more confident. In, yeah. And I got a little bit more of a name. So yeah. now, now they're up to about sixty, seventy-five dollars. Yeah. Uh, and still pretty, pretty cheap. It's still a great price. Yeah, it's, a, it's uh, you, cheap. You meet a lot of your creators out because there. Because I'm know, not a you big. You're yeah. penciling. And yeah. then if you want the inking, you know, extra, it's, all, it's all extra. Yeah, so I'm not a big name, so yeah. I don't really feel like I can easily offer one. <laughs> I could all, I could say, hey, 150 but that doesn't mean anybody's going to buy it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I figure my price range is about what it, what people will pay for it. And it's a little bit of, you know, trial and error. But mm -hmm. then I'll do a commission where I'll say, hey, I'm knocking 50% off my commission prices for the first 10 people who sign up for, for Minions. And that's it. A very, very limited sale. And that's how that's how the minions started. Okay. So, and, and I've gotten I've gotten I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I've become known for oh he, he draws You're, minions. So you've kind of been the minion guy. Yeah. From from friends that I've in feedback I've heard. Yeah. Um, from friends that I've shown the stuff too. And I've got a lot of regrets from you know, people specifically. Anybody from Universal? Minions, is it so. Universal DreamWorks that put out Despicable uh, Me? I, I, I think I, it's Universal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Universal. And, and people, anybody, people ask me all the time. You know, and, hey, Universal, Chris Flick over here. Well, <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't. Now, it's, uh, talking about doing covers, uh, you know, I haven't. I would love to do covers. I, I love the Scotty Young, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, Scotty Young, Baby another you know, type. The, the Marvel I would love to do stuff like that. And and uh, at Virginia Comic Con this past November, I actually just sat beside Matt Hawkins, uh, the image president, yeah. and I told him, you know, he looked at looked at my stuff and he liked it. And I said, hey, you know, if you ever if you ever are interested <laughs> in doing, you know, this type of stuff where okay. you're covered, contact me. Here's right. my card. So, awesome. you know, you know, who knows? Let's make that happen, Image. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to see a Chris Flick Spawn variant. But the covers Savage Dragon. You but know. from what I understand, covers are such a um, niche thing that you have yeah. to have a super big name, and I'm not a super big name. Though. You're getting and, out there, brother. But you know, the thing is, I'm not. I don't know if I'm really interested in doing that because uh, you know, again, my full time job. Yeah. Uh, you got to worry about that. You got to worry about. You got to worry about uh, deadlines for the companies, and you got to be ultra professional about it. Yes, and, sir. And it, you know. I don't know what what's all entailed in that, so I don't know if I could maintain my my full. If they if I'm at my job from 7:30 to 5 o'clock in the you know during the day, and they need something at 12:30, I can't just quit my job and go home and finish up yeah. the cover, you know. Yeah. So it, that's where it gets a little tricky. Now there's a lot of freelance artists out there that who yeah. who do that stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. I just don't know that that much about that part of the. Business. Unless we can make it lucrative for you, man. Yeah. Let's well, yeah, make it lucrative for the guy. I'm always open, so. <laughs> so that, that that brings me to a question. You know, I mean, where where are you going with this? Is this you you want to quit your day job and be able to do this full time and make a living at it, or is that not really where you want to go? You're comfortable with where you are now. Um, I'm I'm comfortable only because I know I I can't. I can't take care of my family doing this. Right. It doesn't pay enough. Um, it doesn't, uh, and I have friends who, who who do the con circuit all year round. That's all they do. They find shows every weekend and they go. And and, and people, people have told me that they were amazed at how many shows I do. And I'm like, hey, I'm nothing. Take a look at this guy. And, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, another name. It's a hustle. Uh, Dan Noakes is a really good friend of mine. Yeah. Um, Dan Noakes is not around here. He's in Maryland. But Dan does this full time. And he goes to, I don't know, I don't even know how he finds Shout out to shows. 21st Century Sand Shark. Yep. That guy was doing it when I was doing it. Yeah. I, yeah he's so. still, I got to give it to him. Yeah. He, he's making it happen. Yeah. And, and I know he's been doing the con circuit full time for about a year and a half. And every weekend he's going somewhere. I'm like, man, that's that's a lot of travel. <laughs> that's a lot of mileage on yeah. your cars, and you can make money at shows, but you know you got you got to you got to pay for gas. You got to find a really really cheap rundown hotel. You got a lot of times it helps if you find somebody room with over the hotel. Definitely. Um, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, well. I, I like my full time job, and I like doing this on the weekend. So okay. you know, right, I'm keeping right. it. I'm keeping it nice. Where I, I I feel like I have sort of like the best of both worlds. I got a really nice job that keeps me comfortable, with, pays for the family, gives me not enough days off where I can I can go to plenty enough conventions to make some extra money where I can get my get my uh, name out there and get get uh, freelance gigs because commissions are one thing, but you also get 
every now you get a, you get a freelance gig here and there that really you know you can jack out the prices and say this is my design work my design work is way up there in terms of in terms of prices so you know uh, it, for me it's just the best of both worlds I'm not interested in doing this full time because I mean if it I, I would be interested in if it would pay the bills but it's right, not yeah. going to pay the bills living around this area <laughs> you're well, Washington you know, DC area <laughs> I mean you know who knows I mean you know what you know what kind of, you know you get more sales you sell more units you get uh, you know, a big yeah. name carrying you or whatever. But I mean, well, on the Webcomic Alliance, we've talked on various podcasts about the benefits and, and drawbacks to being being syndicated, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's there's pros and cons of that. Uh, there's there's benef you know financial benefits to being syndicated, but then you got to be you got an editor and you can only do certain things, and mm -hmm. it can be really really tiring trying to find your fit your humor in somebody else's. Uh, shoebox right right. so you know that that's a drawback too so well well you know but and, and it's certainly all good stuff I mean you know I, I like to hit as many points of reality you know for for the young upcoming people who haven't thought about that kind of stuff definitely you know? yeah, it's like you know you make you, you got to make a plan for your success right. so <coughs> I mean now with capes and babes I mean this is obviously your thing yeah my thing I get full con I have full control over it I can do whatever I want. I don't have somebody looking over my back and saying, "Oh, you have to change that word. You put a cuss word in there." But yeah. at the same time, I also don't have somebody looking over my shoulder and saying, "That joke could be better." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, so I'm a little curious. You know, do you have bigger ideas in the pipeline or other ideas that you know? Some, I'll, some... I'll get up on that same comment. Yeah, like which drove drove me from I used to, you know as you know I used to write comic books. Then I jumped into film because I had people interested in my properties. Have you thought about marketing your properties for? A cartoon comic book because I would love who wouldn't want to see a comic book shop and a werewolf um, inhabiting that shop you know all that kind of stuff yeah from a from an animation standpoint yeah. I think anybody would love to we were, in fact we were just uh, the web comic lines were just talking about we had this big discussion about Bill Watterson about uh, about um, Calvin and Hobbes yeah. and, and you know not wanting to get uh, we all of a, a lot of us on the on the comic alliance are big Big water for, I don't. I don't think you can be a comic book, uh, comic strip <laughs> artist, and not appreciate Calvin, Bill, and, Hobbes. Uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. Sure. But how wonderful it would be to have a a Christmas special of Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> that would never happen, yeah. you know. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why. I think any artist would. Uh, well, most artists would love to have. I would love to have a plushie. I would love to have a plushie of the werewolf to put on my oh, table. Definitely. Uh, well, hey, there's another thing that we haven't talked about at all. Kickstarter. Oh yeah, Kickstarter is Great huge. Resource. It's becoming really popular in terms yeah. of of having a Kickstarter, bunch of, Indiegogo. Yeah. Um, there's, yeah, there's quite a few uh, crowd fundraising yeah, websites cr out yep, there. Yeah, um, I would love. I've been to, successful in doing a lot of stuff on there. Definitely yeah, I, do it. I would love to have a, a plushie of, of of the werewolf. I think that would just skyrocket my sales uh, at mm. convention. Then we'd get a traffic at the at the tables. But in terms of I w the only way I would be able to do that would be through a Kickstarter. But in yeah. terms of animation, I haven't really thought about that, st that stuff. Have you been approached at all? No. Not yet. Uh, oh, okay. I, I think uh, I have heard that, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people go to San Diego. Yes. The San Diego Comic Con yep. in hopes of trying to catch somebody's eye Definitely. on that. And uh, uh, But San Diego is way too expensive <laughs> for me. <laughs> that's a dream, dream shot. So. <laughs> Well, you know, step at a time. You're getting there. You're getting yeah. there. Yeah. <clears throat> He's big time, guys. Check him out. Uh, Chris Flick. Um, I think we went a lot longer than we wanted to do for this pilot episode, but this is a pilot. We're trying it out. You know, we want you to introduce one of my, my, my friends here in the area who's just amazingly talented. But before we go, um, uh, I want to let people know, uh, get, uh, what I want to ask you is, what are some of your inspirations out there? Or Actually, because we're at Flashback Comics, shout out to Flashback Comics for sponsoring us. Manager Troy over here, shout out to Craig George, owner. Um, what are some of the bu books you're picking up uh, uh, that you get inspiration from like, oh, as well, a comics fan? Well, from a comic book fan, I was, I, I've always been a George Perez and a John Byrne nut. Okay. Um, Kevin, Kevin McGuire. I can start listing off so many people <laughs> that, you know, from a comic book standpoint, people have. And that's a really cool thing about going to conventions is, uh, uh, I, I met Gene Gonzalez, who's a fantastic artist, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. and got to talk with him and, and sit down. Conventions are great because uh, do you make a little bit of money at the shows, but if you can get into a you know a, a after hours event and you sit down oh, and definitely. you talk with them at Network. dinner, 
yeah. with one on one. Yeah. And they you can get some really great, great, fantastic advice. Gene was great. We talked about baseball one year at Heroes Con for hours, and mm -hmm. you know, big baseball fan. Uh, Joe Bacar is one of his friends. I got to sit with him. Um, Kevin McGuire is one of one of my bigger influences. Oh, yeah. um, John Byrne, George Perez, yeah, uh, so many guys. Now, from a webcomic standpoint, all all my buddies at the webcomic lines: Don Griffin, Byron Wilkins, Drez Rodriguez, and, and uh, Robin Childs, who does a fantastic uh, comic called Lee Lines. Okay. Got to finally meet her at Intervention Con this this past fall. Okay. Uh, it's, um, Dan uh, Bill McKay is a friend of mine. He's, yep. He lives in Maryland, and he's a fantastic. He wants. He now he does. He has done some uh, some public. We gotta work. get all those guys and show all you local guys. You know, I'm gonna talk with my man here. Yeah. I know Dan. I, I met Bill a couple times. Gotta get you up on here talking on your sh on the show. Yeah, um, Bill, Dan, and I. <laughs> we are like the three Stooges. We go to all, <laughs> we we try to find the same shows together. Yep. Kind of room room together in the same hotel. So. I give shout outs to these guys. Definitely. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, any, any, lots of, oh, John Gallagher is another guy. Oh, Buzzboy. Yeah. Good guy. He yeah. helps me out too. Sky yeah. Dog. In fact, I stole this uh, shirt from him, <laughs> his idea. I, I saw him at SPX oh, one yeah. year and I said, his, oh, I love his that. comic book diner. This, yeah, the Sky so, Dog Press guys. Yeah, I got my logo in the back. So. Definitely. Uh, yeah, so go to, go to Art. I really, really encourage people to go to Artist Alley and just find new stuff. Yes. And there's so many cool things out there. Um, and go to local shows too. Little 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 uh, uh, Capicon is over in uh, Dunmore. Yeah. Shoff Shoff Card Show is coming up on th this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, little little tiny shows like that. You can find uh, you know there's going to be like three artists there, and that's the best time to you know really sit down and talk to them because oh, we're definitely. never busy there. Yeah, and it's, it's a lot less hectic than a big huge massive. Comic Con. Definitely, that's where I got my starts. Was it was the Capital Associates show? Yeah. Yeah, back when uh, Jeff Roken used to run the show, and then met with Mark Nathan and kind of just set me on the way. <laughs> so, uh, what are some of your shows you got coming up? What's your uh, schedule? Okay. So you had it up until April. Yeah. Let me. Uh, let me. I have Bring it, it up here. real quick. Um, <laughs> guys, checking out while he's getting that together. You can't uh, pick flick. You you, you still, still can't, can't print, print flick. flick. Capes and babes, check my man out. Support this guy. Good stuff. So let's, let's right. flip through the book. So, so we're going to do a... Uh, yeah. Go ahead, man. Uh, the, I'm just going to pimp your work. The 200... Two, the book is uh, 200 strips. It's uh, And then and then it's jam-packed with extra content. Got a ton of my illustrations in the back. Uh, commissions, illustrations, all my other graphics, graphic art artwork. Um, 100... Uh, let's see. One, um, 182 pages there and 172 pages there. 15 bucks. You can't beat that. Can't beat it. Where are you going? Where can so, they pick it up at? Well, next week, I, I actually, after you invited me to the superhero night, I uh -huh. got another invite from another friend of mine from another elementary school. Okay. I'm going to be in Fredericksburg. I, I don't know the school, but it's another superhero night. Um, uh, that's next weekend, next okay. Friday. Uh, and then um, I'm going to, I just got invited to, um, uh, a, a, it's called Smudge Expo. It's in Crystal City. I'm going to have it up on my website. That's March 8th. Okay. Uh, Let's give the web, your, your website again. Um, Capesinbabes.com. C A P E S N as a Nancy Babes.com. There you go. Then I'm going to be in Tidewater on uh, April 12th. Down in the Norfolk area. Yep. Okay. Uh, awesome Con in, in Washington, D.C. Shout out to D.C. My boy Ben Penrod, Awesome Con. And then I uh, got Virginia Comic Con on April 27th. So um, Awesome Con is uh, Easter weekend. Yes. And then. Uh, the one day show for Junior Comic Con April twenty seventh. Uh, don't we? Isn't there another one in February in Richmond? Um, the one day. That's the one day cost. I, there, um, actually, we'll check. We'll yeah. throw them all up there, and as yeah, we put these I, videos together, we'll have, have the I content have probably running down here. Yeah. Know my man Matthew back there, great new guy. I have a full team. schedule already, but I only have up to April because my list would have been like way long. Okay. <laughs> we'll try and throw it up here uh, in the end credits. I did. Uh, I did twenty one shows last year. Awesome. Yeah, gotta gotta hustle, man. Yeah. If, follow your dreams, everywhere. If if there's one thing that I want this new show, this pilot episode, the strange world, is as we talk to these various creative people like my man Chris, is just do it, man. You know, yeah. I did it. You can do it. Chris did it. You know, Troy had a comic book way back when. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I did it one did, time, you know, a little local notoriety. Um, well, yeah, it was a collaborative effort. <coughs> we all pulled in together, and, uh, you know, but we could talk about that. It's not about me. Yeah, we will <laughs> talk, we'll talk to Troy one day. I'm, I'm, we'll interview my, my partner in crime here. But shout out to my boy, Chris Fix. Thank you again hey, for coming for on, me. representing our Thank you. We'll yeah. bring Chris out. All right, well, when is volume, This we have volume one, two, and three. I'm working on volume, volume four, four right now. I'm okay. Can, can we get four. a second print of one, you know? Can we see a second print, third print, you know, how many prints do we have uh, down to? You can get a, you can get any of my books on on my website. You can just go there. You can find my store. You can you can get all of them. I, I have volume one, but it's way back in all my in my convention junk thing in my van. So I love the I'll, I'll, I'll bug this guy. Just get, get your assistant to go grab that for you. Go to yeah. www.capesandbabes.com. Check my man Chris Flick out, and then we'll try to get him in here. I, I, we'll we'll have to get him to do some consignment with us here. Flashback. Get it in the shop. All right, guys, this is my man, Chris Flick. Um, any departing words? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring him back on when he's got more sets to promote. Thank you for checking out our pilot episode. Thank you, Chris, for coming Thanks. on. My Thanks man, Troy David me. Phillips. We represent Flashback Comics. I am Patrick Michael Strange. P.S. Live, Breathe, Create. And we are out, y'all.